There are many places on our planet so remote or little mentioned that much of the world has never heard of said sites. And the Great Salvik Kurgan is one such example of an incredible ruin that has been largely forgotten or overlooked by modern academic study. Clearly of a Neolithic age, the thing which is most striking regarding the ruin is the sheer size of the megalithic blocks which make up the main structure. Claimed by many as the most majestic and mysterious ancient monument of southern Siberia, the mound is located in what is locally known as the so-called Siberian Valley of the Kings, where several thousand years ago, it is claimed that there existed a kingdom, one made up of a people once known as the Tagars. Thus, the age monument has been pinned on said culprits, with an age of around 2,300 to 2,500 years attributed to the site. The main earthwork is a stone square mound, 70 meters by 70 meters in size, as mentioned, huge slabs of Devonian sandstone. Some estimated as weighing as much as 50 to 70 tons were somehow once inexplicably delivered to the site from a quarry site of over 100 kilometers away, found upon the banks of the Yenisei River. It is believed that it was an ancient temple, and at a later date an ancient astronomical observatory which like most other Neolithic sites incorporates processional cycles in its alignment, showing the movement of the sun and the moon. As mentioned, it still remains a complete mystery as to what devices were once utilized for the importation and installation of these gigantic stones. At the corners and sides of the stone fences are deeply driven large meniers. All 23 stones are of an enormous site. Measuring up to a height of 6 meters, they're clearly smoking guns flying in the face of upheld academic fallacies. The rare excavations and explorations noted as having been undertaken at the site note that before the construction of the giant earth embankment and its accompanying stone fence, there was a crypt of logs in its place, once in the form of a truncated pyramid. This whole crypt can be found inside the huge earthwork, preserved beneath, untouched yet covered with a thick layer of bark. The crypt had the height of 2.5 meters in depth of 2 meters of water covered the pit. It is claimed that around the burial zone, for a long time a strong anomaly has continually been observed. The study of these phenomena has indeed been engaged by scholars, but the pace of said explorations has been suspiciously slow-paced. Who built the Great Salbic Kurgan? How were these huge stones transported to the site and once driven into the earth at the site? What is this quote, strong anomaly? More investigation and popularization of the site is desperately needed. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. Over the last few years, more and more modern technologies have been utilized by individuals with access to them in an effort to not only expose the truth regarding the real history of man, but to discover the actual original size of these now lost civilizations' ancient ruins. Many sites have been laid to waste, not only by future settlements and tomb robbers, but by Mother Nature herself, many of these most impressive sites having endured eons of erosion after being mysteriously abandoned, exposed to the elements. Yet there exists a number of these sites, which have been somewhat protected from these forces. Although vegetation can have a catastrophic effect, uprooting the megalithic foundations of these sites, yet the actual footprint of these structures, and indeed the overall size of these once lost settlements, can still be seen through modern penetrative radar, with one of the most incredible found in the past few years. Undoubtedly, the mega-metropolis hidden beneath the dense forests of Guatemala. Although some clearings dotted within this landscape have been spared, somehow avoiding the suffocation of trees, it has been discovered that these sites, long argued as separate sites of habitation, were, in reality, once part of the same gigantic city, one of unimaginable size and complexity that was unquestionably home to not mere thousands, but was in fact a settlement that was home to more than 10 million. Yet although this reality is a compelling, supportive fact regarding our own beliefs, in regards to a far greater, now hidden, and widely ignored history of mankind, there are still features of this ancient site 
that is still attempted to be ignored, overlooked, and hopefully concealed from the majority of the world's population, ultimately avoiding them questioning the true reality of what they have been taught, and the possible truth regarding our history, which these sites could provide to all those who gaze upon them. Although these particular megalithic blocks somehow stood on their heads, have been explored and exposed for nearly a hundred years, with many photographic expeditions having been made to these sites, it has now been proven that these megalithic blocks were not merely signposts made of stones in situ, but were clearly stones cut and once transported to their current location and were actually strategically placed within one huge mega-settlement. This fact is attempted to be stifled, avoiding individuals questioning how, if indeed they were transported and cut by our more recent ancestors, the Mayans, how they actually accomplished this feat when they clearly required now lost techniques and technologies, as although they were far more primitive, technologically speaking to the modern man with us only accomplishing such abilities within the last century, all thanks to modern technology. This is clearly an identifying feature, which exposes the true capabilities of the builders of this enormous city, and the fact that although academics would like to argue that it was merely a Mayan settlement, it possesses, like so many other astonishing sights on Earth, as yet unexplained enigmas, which not only fly in the face of this explanation for their origins, but actually suggest that they were merely re-inhabited by the Mayans, allowing archaeologists to point the finger at such a group due to their archaeological fingerprint having been left at the location, sites which were in fact built by a now lost yet once highly capable ancient civilization that due to their immense age has now been lost to history like so many of their ancient settlements, lost to the sands of time, with only the foundation of which now survive, thankfully exposed by modern technologies. Who were these ancient people? How or indeed why did they move and cut such enormous, enigmatic ancient megaliths within this enormous, now lost city? It is a place which we find highly compelling. In 1768, the Thunderstone, an enormous Rapakivi granite boulder currently claimed to have weighed 1,250 tons, was successfully moved many miles by our modern ancestors, a stone which gained its name from a lightning strike having split it from the bedrock. This feat, if true, would alter many attested views regarding the currently understood limitations of ancient civilizations. It would insinuate that the successful movement of seemingly impossibly huge stones used in ancient constructions were done by the claimed civilizations. Sculpted by the French sculptor Etienne Maurice Falconet and transported by Marinos Carbares, a lieutenant colonel in the Russian army, who was tasked with figuring out how to move the stone from Lantka six kilometers inland from the Gulf of Finland, to its final location beneath a bronze statue of Peter the Great within St. Petersburg. Originally embedded deep within the ground in an area of marshy terrain, they had to develop revolutionary methods to transport the colossal stone. Waiting until winter to liberate the stone from the earth and attempt to move it over solid frozen ground. This, however, is where diligent research and academic assumption part ways. Although there are engravings of the stone, nearly in its original shape, seemingly being moved across the earth by manpower, many modern researchers of this event, along with a number of highly capable scholars, believe that these images were taken on the first day of the stone's transport. Many suspect that Catherine the Great, present at the event, was there only to witness the start of this arduous task. After this event, she traveled back to St. Petersburg to await its arrival. What's more, this first day, according to numerous reliable yet rarely academically shared sources, state that in its original form, these workers were only able to move the stone an inch. A declaration, also according to these same sources, was made by Catherine herself, elated at witnessing this stone move an inch before departing for Russia. Not only do many independent researchers now believe 
that the original weight was incorrect, but also that when it was eventually moved, had lost a dramatic amount of his body. Falconet had originally intended to cut the stone to a mere 600 tons before its transportation, and as the original stone was seemingly impossible to move when Catherine the Great left for St. Petersburg. Furthermore, now in position and attributed as over a thousand tons in weight, this is also an academic fallacy. As Graham Hancock's website puts it, quote, Seen from the back, the stone is about 3 meters wide at the top and 6 meters wide at the base. If it were shaped like a perfect cube, its weight would be some 1,200 tons. However, because the stone slopes on all sides, its weight does not exceed one-third of this, about 400 tons, a far cry from the currently touted 1,250 tons. It's claimed that, at 1,500 metric tons, the Thunderstone is the heaviest stone ever moved by human power, and that this is supposed to be a proof that no advanced technology was needed for the transport of colossal ancient stones. However, unlike Russians in the second half of the 18th century, Romans and their predecessors had no ball bearings, iron rails, or metal sledges. Those things all benefits of modern technology. As much as one has to admire Falconet's engineering achievement, what he has proved is that technology of the late 18th century was indeed capable of transporting large megaliths." End quote. It seems that the Thunderstone, being used as a proven example of primitive techniques and civilization, able to have constructed the currently unexplained sites which dot the Earth, however, like with many other academic explanations as to the construction of these sites, it is not only contradictory to the facts, but based on a faulty premise. Due to these deliberate twisting of the facts, the story of the Thunderstone is undoubtedly highly compelling. Throughout our research of ancient antiquities, we have stumbled upon countless mysteries whose creation and often technique or technology used to lift them, which remain complete enigmas to modern academia. Seemingly impossible ancient megaliths litter this earth, some a few mere tons, such as a lintel within the treasure of Atreus, although it must be noted that although the lintel be only a few tons in weight, the treasury is the oldest and indeed largest standing dome structure upon this earth, and regardless of it being the largest by a long chalk, its walls were once somehow finished like glass. This glass finish was also found and actually still be seen within the Grand Gallery within the Great Pyramid of Giza, a pyramid which we have previously exposed as not only having casing stones of a much younger age, but the exoskeleton just like the stones used in the creation of the walls of the Grand Gallery, many hundreds if not thousands of tons in weight still exhibiting these ancient civilizations' ability for perfection. Other ruins which have also lay abandoned for unknown millennia still contain unexplainable megaliths – Baalbek, Jordan, Japan, the UK, Easter Island, Polynesia, Peru, Chile, Italy, the list goes on. All these countries still possess stone megaliths, which even modern machinery we would struggle to work with. Many structures, however, we still could not recreate. We could not move or place such stones with such incredible accuracy. In our opinion, there is overwhelming combining complementing factors which link an ancient civilization's worldwide reach, where not only did they share wisdom of stone working, fort and temple building, astronomy knowledge of our orrery, their technologies, among many yet unknowns which were somehow lost to history. This vanishing event can even be seen within their megalithic activity. 
El Gigante on Easter Island, which would have been the largest of these ancient moai, suddenly abandoned, which due to the island's incredibly geographically remote location, we perceive is simply evidence of the breadth of this catastrophe. The abandoned obelisk Aswan, provided by Chris Dunn's work, to have not been abandoned due to a crack discovered, but that this was post-abandonment. Yet more proof we feel of this catastrophic event. Yangshan Quarry also suddenly abandoned. These all could be seen as supporting evidence of a sudden disappearance of this once incredible civilization. Yet regardless, to unravel and understand a civilization capable of such a wonders as Kalish Temple, one which seemingly simply vanished, is a pursuit we find highly compelling. A few months ago, we did a video regarding an enigmatic mountain which rests within modern-day Tibet. We touched upon the amazing legends, speaking of the mountain actually being that of an ancient man-made pyramid, which according to such legends is placed at the center of the universe. They spoke of a mysterious giant eye placed upon the top of the mountain, an eye which, according to said legends, will reveal itself when the ice and snow within the area melts away. Akin to a story containing the Eye of Mordor, yet hopefully not as malevolent. Although Mount Kailash can be found within modern-day Tibet, its location is very close to the borders of India, a place which few know possesses one of, if not the most amazing ancient structure to have ever been discovered or indeed built upon our planet. A structure which dwarfs the Great Pyramids, and indeed the Great Sphinx with artistic wonder. Actually known as the Kailash Temple, it is an exquisitely cut series of supposed praying temples and other communal buildings which was, many thousands of years ago, carved straight out of an enormous horseshoe-shaped rock resting within a hillside. According to mainstream academia, Kailash Temple was somehow built by a primitive people using primitive tools during a duration of 400 years, from 200 BC to 600 BC. However, no one seems to be able to explain how such a primitive culture could have possibly created something so awe-inspiring, something so artistically accurate and wonderful, something we would indeed struggle to recreate today. A structure not only architecturally accurate, but also drenched in a masterpiece of sculpture. Largely accepted as a flawless piece of art, no less than 200,000 tons of stone was masterfully carved away, creating several separate temples, each drenched in tiny artistic detail. Rediscovered in 1819, is it possible that the Hindu decorations found within were merely later additions? Additions to a relic left actually built by a civilization far more advanced and far more ancient than we are allowed to publicly believe? It is understandable for one to wonder, how did a primitive civilization create such a wonder with primitive tools, attaining such a perfection, such refined finish to each tiny detail? It is conveniently unexplained just how they managed to cut into this single block of rock with such precision and indeed vision adorning the structure with thousands of animals. It seems as if it were a tribute, a gift depicting what can be found on our planet. Is Mount Kailash, as legends say, really the center of the universe? Is this mind-bogglingly detailed, most intricately built ancient temple by a long way actually a tribute to this fact? Made up of temples which are all now perceived to be shared between three faiths, Buddhist, Hindu, and Jain. Are these multiple faiths further evidence of a re-inhabitation rather than a construction? The 200,000 tons of rock, for example, is nowhere to be found. And as previously covered in the Kailash video, the same is seen with the apparent enormous excavation found around the base of Mount Kailash itself. Compelling evidence for manipulation of the landscape 
giving credence to the legends of it being, in fact, an enormous pyramid. Regardless of this, the fact that the temple carries the same name as this mysterious and still unclimbed mountain within Tibet, we find highly compelling.